Okay, today is class seven of CAD 212 on February 10th. Today in class, we're going to go over roof types. We're gonna go over different types of roofs. Uh, we're gonna discuss the slope chart. Um, we'll review that in files today. For Revit today, we're going to go over roofs. We're gonna discuss um, how to create an overhang, um, how to create a slope, use the define slope tool, We'll talk about slope a little bit more. Uh, obviously that's big discussion today. Um, then we'll talk about hiding objects. Uh, there's a few way, different ways that we can do that. There's a temporary hide isolate. There's ways that we can do it semi-permanently. Uh, visibility graphics, hide in view. And then um, a lot of times when you hide stuff, you'll be like, you know, oh my God, where did it go? So you'll wanna know how to reveal those hidden elements also. So just some uh, important dates that are coming up. We have no class next week, so we've got Mardi Gras break, even though we're not, there's no parades, we still have Mardi Gras break, so uh, that's a nice um, time for anybody to catch up on work that you're kind of maybe falling behind on a little bit or need some extra time to do, so um, this is a fairly big lecture today um, with some and the roofs are a little bit complicated sometimes, so it'll give you time to like practice that and get all that turned in for the following week. <clears throat> um, midterm project is going to do, be due on Monday, March 8th, and the midterm exam is on Wednesday, March 10th. On March 8th, the exam, the um, project will be due by the end of class. We'll go over that a little bit more as we get closer. And then also on March 8th, we will review for the midterm which will be on March 10th. Uh, also, one last thing, if anybody pops in to class late, that's not a problem. I know things are crazy. Um, but if I don't get you for roll or if you're missing roll in any way, just send me a text or a message day of and let me know. So let me know, I came into class late. Um, can you please mark me uh, as late or in attendance or, or something? Um, such as our mysterious iPhone person who, uh, please let me know who you are so you can get the, uh, credit for attending class. Um, make sure that's the day of that you do it. It's like two weeks from now and you find out that I, I missed you late one day or missed you at all. You know, the, yeah, that's a little bit too late, but just let me know day of uh, and then we can take it, I can get that taken care of for you. So, all right, with all that being said, we'll go ahead and jump into today's lecture. Uh, about roofs. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera off just because I find it a little distracting and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so for our roof lecture today, let's go ahead and jump into Canvas. Uh, you can jump into Files, Spring 2021, and under that, I have a whole separate folder just for our roof information. So you can go ahead and open that up. This is what we're gonna be going through today. Um, first thing I wanna do is go over different roof types. I've got two uh, different um, files in here that kind of give you the information about roofs. So let's go ahead and jump into the smaller one first, which is just roof.jpg. <sighs> This is just a, a simple breakdown of the type of roofs that we have available for us. Um, obviously, there's a ton of different roofs. If we just go ahead and uh, let me download this so I can get everything open at one time. That one. And then we'll open this one. You can see there's a lot more extensive roof types on here. And depending on what type of house you're going to design in the second half of class, then you may want to take advantage of some of these different types of roofs, which is uh, yeah, perfectly fine. Um, the main things I want to draw your attention to on this are the hip roofs, which you see all sides are sloped on these hip roofs, and then also gable roofs, uh, where you have a peak on this end, a gable and the wall goes all the way up to the top. These are the main two roofs that we usually deal with in this class. Uh, as you go along and you learn how to do the roof tools, you'll learn how to do these other roofs as you go along. Um, but for the main uh, distinction between two roofs, when we talk about gable and hip roofs, these are the two I want you to um, pay attention to. And these are usually the ones that 
uh, are going to be on your house. As we get through to some of your other houses, you may have more complicated roofs, such as these roofs over here that have lots of hips and valleys. So this is the hip roof. This where these two roofs meet is known as the valley. Um, yeah, you don't see a lot of butterfly roofs. That's a little like on more modern houses. Uh, later on, the second half of class, we will learn how to create a dormer roof, which is this part right here. Uh, this little roof. So um, for the most part, this kind of covers all, well, a lot of roof, different roof types. Um, but these are the ones that I want you to know for the midterm. So information for the midterm, general information for your knowledge. Miss Martin? Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I think you marked me as absent, but I've been here since the class started. Are you the mysterious iPhone? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't even know it was showing up like that. I'm sorry, okay. yeah. Yeah, no worries. This is Rosalind, right? <laughs> yes, Rosalind. So I'm okay. here and I'm always on time, but I didn't know it was marked. Yeah, that. yeah, I was, um, yeah, we would, we were trying to find out who the mysterious iPhone person was. I wasn't sure if that was you or not. So thank you for letting me know and I'll get that corrected for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Sorry. No problem. Um, okay, now that that mystery is solved, um, let's move on to a roof parts diagram and then we'll go ahead and move on to the roof pitch chart. I don't have this one listed on the uh, lesson plan for today, but I wanna go over it with you anyway, because it's important information to know. And uh, roofs are a two part lecture. So we'll be going over this stuff uh, in future as well. So this, when it decides to open, let me just download that. Much quicker. This is just a section view of what a very basic, simple um, residential house roof construction looks like. Uh, the main parts, uh, let's go over all the parts and then I'll draw your um, attention to the ones that we're gonna be discussing in class. Obviously we have shingles, you have your roof sheathing, there's a felt underlayment on this, um, the rafter is here, subfascia here, uh, eaves drip, uh, Fascia is one of the things that we're going to be discussing in the second half of our roofs lecture, if not today. Uh, obviously, gutters are going to be on a part of that. Soffit, we're going to learn how to create as well. Soffit is the um, piece of material that lies from your fascia to the external wall line. Uh, we have the freeze board and then also the brick veneer. So you can see how when we're creating our actual Revit drawing, our model, a lot of this information doesn't show up in our larger drawing. So that's why we have all of these uh, section views and detailed drawings in order to give your contractor uh, the correct information on how to correctly assemble this kind of stuff right here. So we kind of touched on that a little bit when we talked about our different plan types at the beginning of class. <clears throat> but the main things that we're going to learn how to do in Revit, obviously, you know, we do have the capabilities of doing all these other things, um, we're, but just to focus on um, basics to get, kind of get you started, uh, we're gonna talk about how to create a fascia, gutters and soffit in the next class once we kind of master how to create a roof type in and of itself. So that's a basic breakdown of uh, roof types. Once again, this is for your information. Uh, this will not show up on a quiz or anything like that, but I do want you to know where these different pieces are located um, as we're drawing them. So fascia, gutters, and soffit. All right, what's next? And finally, uh, as part of the lecture today, we're gonna talk about roof pitch. Uh, this is a big driving force in um, how do we create the angle of our roof, the slope. Um, how this breaks down is notice that there's 12 inches horizontally and 12 inches vertically. Well, this is how it's measured. For every 12 inches horizontally, if you go up one inch, that equates to 4.5 degrees. Uh, if you go up, 12 
12 slope that equals 45 degrees. I don't want you to memorize this. Once again, this is just for uh, your knowledge and also a good visual representation. A lot of times when we're drawing our roof um, from home, we're not like, how are we supposed to figure out what that slope looks like? Well, we're just gonna use kind of like a guesstimate right now of what looks best. And this kind of gives you a way to break it down because when we put our measurements in a, uh, Revit to create our slope, there's gonna be like a 912 slope, a 1012. And this gives you a nice visual representation of what, what that looks like. Yes, it'll be in Revit as well. But this is just another tool in your arsenal um, of knowledge. So it's, it's a good reference. It's, good something, it's something that's good to go back and reference to so you can see. But I do not expect you to remember um, that, you know, a, uh, an H12 slope is 33.75 inches. So, but it's just uh, more of that visual, visual representation for you. So, um, and that's it for the, the roof lecture today. We're going to go ahead and jump into the Revit part of this. Does anybody have any questions about the, um, the lecture part? Okay, cool. We'll go ahead and jump into um, the Revit part. So we'll go over how to do a basic roof, and then we'll discuss all these options right here. So... <clears throat> Oh, and uh, I didn't get a chance to review all y'all's um, work yet. Uh, we'll get that done um, next day or two, but you don't have an assignment due. Well, it's not really an assignment. You don't have to turn in any work until um, like the 19th. So you have plenty of time to catch up and practice and, and do lots of stuff. Cause remember we don't have class next week. So I'm not gonna have you turn in your progress here. So you can have till the 19th to turn that in. That way I can have over the weekend to get that caught up for you and, and check that. Um, and yeah, that doesn't count for or against you for your grade, just a way to me, for me to keep track of your work and see how you're doing. <clears throat> All right, uh, in order to draw a roof, we need to have walls in place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw four quick walls with that tool. And we'll go ahead and start with our roofs. So once we have our roofs up, uh, notice here in my project browser, I'm just hitting here level one. Um, most times people just try and draw this in level one and all sorts of things can happen with that. And let's find out. Uh, so let's go to architecture tab, build panel, roof tool. If you do a drop down on this roof tool, notice there's many different ways that we can create a roof. We can do a roof by footprint, which is the default. That's what we're gonna be using roof by footprint. There's another way to do roof by extrusion and roof by face. We'll learn those later on. Um, and then we can also have our soffit, fascia, and gutter tools here as well. Uh, one other thing I don't think I pointed out, notice if you linger over um, the tool for long enough, a little description is going to pop up to kind of help you to uh, create that as well. So that's, that's nice. Um, that helps during a midterm exam. Hint. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and just use the default roof for this. First thing that's going to happen is going to pop up and um, it's going to give you this window that says uh, lowest level notice. You have created a roof on the lowest level. Would you like to move it to level two? You know what? A lot of times people are just like, they just ignore this. You know, trust me, it happens and they don't bother with it. Um, when you come back over here to properties, notice that this is a basic roof, generic 12 inch. Uh, we do have some other ones that are pre-made in here as well. Here's the asphalt shingles. Um, when we start this, I like to use a generic nine inch one. Uh, you can use the 12 or the nine inch, but I like to use the nine inch one and you'll see why later on. Um, once we do that, <clears throat> notice on here, uh, my defaults are to pick boundary lines and to pick walls. So that means when I come over here, it's automatically going to pick the walls. So we don't want to mess with that. We want to leave that as boundary line and pick walls. It makes things easier for you, especially getting started out. So notice how these kind of like jump over here. So if I just do this, I've got a basic roof here. 
Notice I've got toggles back again. Toggles, obviously the roof is going to be on the external wall. If I click the toggles and they're on the internal wall, then the roof is going to be just suspended over this blank space and not over the wall. So you always wanna make sure that the magenta line is on the exterior wall. And then I've got a slope on each one of these guys, which means that there is a, a slope and that there's a slope on all ends. That means I'm gonna have a hip roof on here. And this gives me a 912 slope. So this is just a basic roof. And then uh, you'll go ahead and just hit the green check mark and see what happens. You're going to get this notice uh, all the time. Would you like to attach highlighted walls to the roof? So the walls that are underneath the roof, do you want to attach them? Um, always put don't attach. We'll see what the difference is between the two, but put don't attach because it's going to make life much easier for you. So don't attach those for now. <clears throat> so we got something that looks like this. So we're like, oh, that looks weird. Um, let's jump to 3D and see what happened. Okay, so let's turn some consistent color on. Well, that looks really weird. What the heck happened there? So um, you would think that you would just have to delete that roof and start over, but you don't. So what happened was, at the beginning of this, when I started to draw the roof, when it asked me if I wanted to move this to level two and I said, no, it kept it on level one. So this wall, this roof is being created on level one. I should have changed it to level two, but I forgot to, or I just ignored it, but that's okay. I can go back to my properties and my base level. And now I can just change this from level one to level two and hit apply and now my, roof is on my second floor. Things are starting to look a little bit better. So roof is where it's supposed to be. Now it's upside down. Let's flip that back up. <clears throat> so I still got this weird thing going on with my walls. So a lot of times, remember these walls that we bring in are going to default to 20 feet. Well, we need to attach the walls at this point to the roof. And I just want to attach my external walls to the roof so there's a couple of different ways I can do that. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click this one wall face right now. And if I come up here on the ribbon, notice there's a tool called attach top to base. If I click on that and then I click on the roof, well, that's automatically gonna attach that wall to that roof now. I can click on all of them at the same time. I can click on that, can't hold my control all of them and attach top to base and click on the roof and attach those again. Hey, wait, how did you click on all of them? Uh, you click on the first one, you hold down your control button and you click on the others. Let's do that again. <clears throat> click on one roof, hold down your control button on your keyboard and then click on the other two and then hit attach top to base and click on the roof. And you'll notice if, um, well, I'll come back to that. Yeah. Let's go back a couple of steps. So that's one way to do it. And there's, there's a, a more advanced way to do it. So uh, we can go ahead and click on one wall then you can right click. And then we're going to go to select all instances. There's two ways to select all instances. You can do visible in view or in entire project. I always recommend to do visible in view because if you're working on a huge project, it will select well, sometimes you don't mean to select. And then that'll screw that up unless those are constrained. So always do, if you wanna select them all, hit select all instances, visible and view. It's gonna select them all, make them active. And then you can do attach top to base with that as well. So same way to do it, you can do it individually. You can do it by using the control button on your keyboard or you can do select all instances to select them all. And there's times that you want to use each individual tool and, you know, separately. Say if I wanted to just select some walls and not other walls, then I would probably want to do the control key or do one at a time. Um, the more you play with that, the more that'll start to make sense. Okay. Uh, everybody good so far? 
we're going to do this a couple of times just so you can kind of catch on. Um, so I'm going to do a roof again. I'm going to just delete this one. I'm going to jump to level two this time where the roof is supposed to be. So once again, architecture tab, build panel, roof tool. Now I want to add an overhang. So that last roof we uh, created, you notice that the roof was flush with the side of the house. We really want to have an overhang on it. The size of the overhang is obviously going to depend on your house. And then uh, as you get into designing, you can kind of go from there how you want to design a roof. So for our overhang here, let's just do a three foot overhang. And notice when I come back over here, I've got that location line that's jumping out from the house now. That's showing where that um, roof line is going to be now, which is nice. Once again, we've got a slope on all ends. I'll go ahead and hit the green check mark. Once again, I don't want to attach. Well, let's just attach them. This no, let's don't attach them. We'll go back to that later. Let's jump back to 3D. Roof is in place. I want to fix my walls now. So pick one, right click, select all instances visible in view, attach top to base, and click on the roof. And we've got those attached nicely. All right, delete this one and do another one. Let's go back to level one. Now I'm going to put a gable on either end of this. Remember, a gable is the peaked roof on the other side. Uh, I should put a gable on one side and a hip on the other. Um, let's go to our roof tool. And I'm going to hit now again because people forget. And I have, this is what's going to determine whether or not you have a slope on that. It's called Define Slope. This is going to pop up a lot when you create roofs and especially when we're doing our midterm, I'm gonna ask you to create gable roofs and um, hip roofs. So in order to create a gable roof, I'm gonna turn that Define Slope off. But right now I need a slope on the side. I want a hip roof on this side and I need a slope on this side. So now I'm gonna turn Define Slope off, uncheck it, and now when I come over here, notice there's not a slope symbol on this side. That means this is gonna be just a, 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 this is gonna be a gable roof on this side now. now I'm gonna hit my green check mark again. Don't detach, 3D view, something weird. Let's fix it, select the roof. Change base constraint to level two. Grab these walls. Select all instances visible in view. Attach top to base, click on the roof and all those are attached now. So now I have a hip roof on one side and a gable on the other side. These Is there a Sorry. That's okay. Is there a way to do it like once you've already built the roof? Is there a way to do it like with the toggles or something? Um what am I toggling? Just to, to make the, the roof a gable versus a hip. Well, you're not gonna toggle anything with that, but say like um your client comes back and says, mm, and see, I want to I want a gable on both sides. So how do I fix that? Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. So yeah, we can fix that without having to redraw it. And that's just going to be all about uh, editing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that roof, make it active. Notice up here on my ribbon, I now have a tool called Edit Footprint. I'm going to click on Edit Footprint. And it brings me back to that. Uh, magenta outline of that what that roof is supposed to look like. So now all I have to do is click on this um, side over here that has the uh, slope on it, make that active, 
my tools become available up here again, here I can go ahead and change that define slope, turn it off. Notice that slope symbol turned off, hit my green check mark again, and now I have a gable on both ends. So you can go, go back and edit it. Thank you. Yep, no worries. Um, yeah, as we can kind of progress through this more, it'll it'll start making more sense and you'll you'll get more comfortable with like you know, changing and manipulating all this. Uh, you can do that. Uh, the best thing to do is I, sometimes I always say go ahead and try to edit it and fix it. But sometimes if it's getting too frustrating, the easiest way to do is also just delete it and start over. But a lot of times we can just uh, edit it as well. Um, so what if you did, let's play through some of the uh, different options for roofs. Let me go ahead and click on this, make it active again. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit footprint. Uh, let me turn off the slope on this side. Let's see what happens. So now I have a shed roof. Let's go hit edit footprint again and let's turn off the slope on this side and see what happens. And now I have a flat roof. So you can see a lot of stuff is adjusted by uh, that slope tool. Um, let's go ahead and put that back on. With the roof active, once again, go back to edit footprint. I'm going to put my slope back on these guys. I can also change my overhang at this time if I wanted to, if I wanted to change. Don't, uh, don't change the, the overhang from this. We can. You can click on that. Uh, always, when it's active, try and use it from this overhang tool over here because this, you know. And don't, you can kind of drag these back and forth a little bit but that will just mess you up. So it's always best to kind of drive this overhang stuff from this uh, options bar right here. So I put the slope back on those two. Let's jump back. Uh, once again, I've got um, two gables on either end of that roof. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, let's take a look at it from this side. So notice um, when we created this, uh, it defaulted to a 912 slope. That's the default that's going to be in the slope is once, like we said before, for every 12 inches across is a certain number up. Um, so it's 12 horizontally to nine vertically uh, inches. But we can change that. This is kind of a steep um, slope on this roof. Uh, for your midterm and for the houses that you know you're creating, not everybody's going to have a 912 slope. So we want to know how to change the, the pitch on this. Um, so with the roof active, you're going to jump back over to your properties. At this time, you're going to scroll down to dimensions where it says slope. And notice how it says 912 slope here. Well, here's where we can change that. So if it's a shallow roof, we can do a 312 slope. And it'll change that. So on your midterm exam, I'll give you parameters to create and say, if I want you to make a 612 slope roof, then you would just change that to six. And then we'd have a 612 slope here. But this is another way that you can kind of play with your design by just changing what that slope looks like. Let's just do a 1212 to see what that looks like. Very sharp. Um, but yeah, you're going to, uh, need to know for the exam how to change that slope as well. Okay. And uh, let me do one last thing on here for the roofs before we move on. I'm going to go ahead and delete this roof again. I'm going to jump to level one. I'm going to draw an internal wall right now to show you what happens to certain things there. Um, just draw a couple pieces in here. All right, so once again, people just tend to end up drawing their roof on level one. I'm going to do my roof. 
I'm going to skip that. Um, I'm going to leave it as a three, uh, three foot overhang. Let's make, well, I should actually just make it one so you can see what the difference is. I'm going to put the defined slope back on. And I said 912. Just a short little overhang here. And green check mark. And what will happen if I just kind of default and get those attached and just say attach? Uh, looks normal, but when I jump back to 3D, <laughs> I got something that looks like that when I have just a roof. So what happened is when I hit attach um, walls to roof, it just, the roof is on level one. Now all the walls are basically attached underneath this. So it looks like I just have a, a roof that looks really weird. Um, so I know I need to change the level of the roof. I need to move the roof actually to level two. So in my properties, I'll change that base level to level two. Let's see what happens there. Whoa. So now our house stretched up. But now if we look inside that, let me delete this roof. Oh, now I don't want to delete the roof. Let me hide the roof for you. And we'll talk about hiding stuff in a second. This is what happens when you do attach your walls, all of your walls attach, not just your external walls, but your internal walls. And this is gonna make you crazy. So that's why you never wanna attach the walls. We wanna do them separately. Uh, granted, if you do have a cathedral ceiling or something in your house, you, you do wanna do this, but you'll still do this separately. So now we've gotta go through this whole thing where we have to undo our walls and stuff like that. But this is why I ask you not to attach walls when we are creating the roof, because just because it's gonna create these this issue for you. And um, there's ways we can fix it but it's, it gets a little frustrating. So uh, let me do how do we fix it? And then um, we can move on from there. So, all right, so accidentally attach this. So this kind of plays into our role of temporary hiding and isolating stuff that we're gonna talk about next. And as you see, as you get more and more complicated in your Revit drawing, more and more stuff is gonna show up in place. And a lot of times we need to hide stuff in order to get access to what we need to like fiddle with. So what does that mean? That means in order for me to fix this problem, I need to hide this wall to get access to these walls inside and fix it. So a lot of times we are going to be learning how to hide stuff and turn it back on um, just so it just helps our drawing and that it also is something that we're going to be using when we start creating our sheets. So uh, in order for me to just temporarily hide this, I'm just going to click on it, make it active, come down to uh, this bar down here, and notice I've got my little pair of glasses right here, and if we linger over it, it says temporary hide isolate. So I just want to hide that temporarily, and uh, if I click on that, I can hide um, things by, I can hide it by category. If I accidentally hit category, it's going to hide all my walls. Well, I don't want to hide the category. This time I just want to hide the one element. So now when I hide that one element, you see I have access to this in, inside of the house. Because what I want to do now is detach these walls from the roof before we attach them. Now, since I made that mistake and didn't uh, did it the wrong way the first time, now I have to detach them. So I'm going to click on this wall, make it active come back up to my ribbon and notice I have the detach top to base tool. Now I'm gonna to click on detach, I'm gonna click on my roof, and then that's gonna jump through my roof, but it's detached, which is better. I can fiddle with it more now here. I'm gonna do the same thing to this wall, click on this wall, detach top to base and click on the roof. But I have to have access to both the wall and the roof at the same time, which is why I hit that wall over here just to make it easier for me. Now I know temporary hide isolates on because it says so right here. And also I have this cyan colored border around here. If I saved my progress and I closed out Revit, um, and then when I reopened it, this would be turned off. This uh, The temporary hide isolate would go away and uh, I can just start working again. So temporary hide isolate is just that. It's temporary once I save Revit and um, turn it off and I reopen it, this will 
the model will go back to the way uh, it's supposed to. But there's a way that we can kind of semi-permanently hide things as well. And there's times that we want to do that. If you're just fiddling with your model and trying to get access to different things to fix it, temporary hide isolate works. But usually when we get into a point where we're putting things on a sheet, we want to do things uh, where it's kind of semi-permanent and, and we hide stuff. <clears throat> So before we move on to that, I'm going to show you how to fix these walls so they're correct. So um, notice here, our level two is set to 10 feet. There's a couple of different ways I can fix these walls. So if I click on, whoops, not that one, this wall, nope, that wall. If I come over to my properties and I scroll down here, there's a couple of different ways I can make this wall 10 feet. I can change top constraint. Right now it's unconnected and it's set at a 20 foot height. I can change that height to whatever height I wanted it to be. If I wanted it to be 100 feet, I could make it 100 feet. If I wanted it to be one foot, I could make it well, one foot. So and I can just make it 10 foot if I wanted to. And that way it's going to be on my level two. But since my level two is you know, set to 10 feet already, I can just take that same wall or take this other wall and how I can change it to 10 feet is change the top constraint to up to level two and apply. So they're both now set to 10 feet, but I just did it two different ways. Let me hide this. So you can see they're both now 10 feet. One was done by changing the height of the roof. The other one was done by changing the top constraint. And notice that still is set to 10 feet. So there's many different ways that we can change and manipulate things in, in Revit. And um, you know, if you ever come across a question on a quiz that says, is there only one way to create a wall? Well, no, there's always multiple ways to do something. Um, so let's, let, now I can, I'm gonna turn this stuff back on. So I'm going to go back down to my temporary height isolate, reset temporary height isolate, and everything comes back. Everybody still with me? Okay. So <clears throat> hiding objects, we did temporary height isolate. Uh, now there's, like I said, semi-permanent ways to do it. There's a visibility graphics and there's a hide and view. Visibility graphics we use a lot, especially when we get to the point where we're creating our sheets. Um, there's two different ways that we can access visibility graphics. Well, there's a couple of different ways, but um, the shortcut is you can type on your, just type anywhere on your keyboard, just type VA. That made me a liar. There it is. Type VV and this window will pop up. Or you can type VG, obviously for visibility graphics, and that will pop up. Visibility graphics is also located over here in your properties, but I tend to use the shortcut on that VV or VG all the time. You should just VV because it's because it's the simplest one. VV pop up. So here, how does this work? Notice. We have a drop down here. If you have a really complicated model, they have all the different disciplines available here. Right now, we're just going to be using the architecture discipline. So we just have this one checked off. Uh, this goes into your model categories right here, which means every piece of material, every tool that we use uh, is um, located in here, which means that if I scroll through here and I find my roofs, and I wanna kind of turn this off for a while and not have to worry about it on temporary hide isolate. I can just click on this roof tool, hit apply, and my roof will disappear. And then I come out of here. Notice that, that cyan border is not available anymore. I just know that that roof is not there. If I save my Revit drawing now and I reopen it, the roof will still be hidden in visibility graphics. So. Uh, in order to put it back, I will go back to visibility graphics, VV or VG, scroll back down to roofs, click on it, make it active, and my roof is back. I'm just showing you all this now. Uh, the most, the one that you're going to be using the most at the moment to work on your drawing is going to be temporary height isolate. 
but a lot of times people will hide stuff by clicking right clicking and picking hide in view. And this is similar to visibility graphics as well. If I, if I close my Revit, if I save my Revit drawing and then reopened it, this would be back and people will be like, oh my God, where did my roof go? You forget that you did it. Sometimes people do it by accident and they just, cause you automatically using to like right click and you know, hide stuff. But the hard part is how do I get that back? If I right click on there, and I look through here and I'm like, oh, I don't know where it is. I get, you know, people will look for it and they don't know how to refind it. Well, <laughs> this is one thing that's not too intuitive on Revit, but in order to find these missing parts, you have to come back down to this ribbon down here and you click on reveal hidden elements. Now, when I click on reveal hidden elements, I've got my roof back. So, oh, okay, there's my roof. That's what was missing. So I'm going to click on the roof now, right click and do unhide in view. And then I'll turn this off and my roof's back. So depending on how you hide stuff is how you find stuff. And then you kind of um, play with this again. You're like, oh man, I forgot, to, forgot about that wall. So go back to reveal hidden elements. There's the wall, click on the wall, right click, unhide in view. Now your wall's back, turn it off, and we're back to where we started from. So as you get more practice in it, you'll get a feel of which times you want to use which, but just to kind of start with as we start getting into more and more complicated drawings, because we're going to need to hide the roof a lot once we start doing some other stuff in here, you're going to want to use um, temporary hide isolate. And then if we jump to a different view, notice that in this one we are in 3D, if I jump to my south view, that roof is only hidden in that um, 3D view. I know, it, I mean, the roof's there, there's no cyan colored border around here. If I jump back to 3D, it's still in temporary hide isolate. So this is a time that uh, the tool is view specific. Uh, it's not gonna populate over all the different views um, but when you hide something, it's just uh, pretty much constrained to the, the view that in which you hide the element, meaning this is 3D right now. If I wanted to hide the roof in my south view, I could just jump back to my south elevation, click on that roof at this time, and hit you know temporary hide isolate and hide it in this view. But that doesn't mean it's gonna be hidden in my north view either. So that's it for lecture today. Um, any questions on the stuff that we did today? I have a recap question, yeah. if you don't mind. No, not at all. Um, I remember when you were showing us the walls and we have these temporary dimensions. Mm -hmm. And I just don't remember you were deleting the temporary dimensions to then get real ones somehow. What's that all about? Okay, so the temporary dimensions are there strictly just so you can um, set the set the a proper depth and length of like these pieces. So like here right now, from center line to center line, it's eight foot. But if my actual internal dimension is eight foot, I want to make sure that this dimension is coming from the correct measurement. So if I want this to actually be eight foot, the only way I can do that, well, not the only way, but I can use my temporary dimensions in order to get that set. But, and I want to lock it in place. I don't want that wall to move anymore. So that's when the temporary dimensions are going to become uh, semi-permanent. And that's when I can use this lock. Now this lock is here and it's set. Now, as since this is the beginning of my drawing, I don't need to have this dimension line here. Um, I can delete it and make it go away because it's just muddying up my drawing and, I, and I, I don't like it set there. So uh, if there's so much more I need to do and this is just gonna get in the way of you know, my drawing as I go back and I'm gonna hit just hit delete, make it go away. Uh, remember this is where it says that even though it basically it says, even though you deleted this temporary dimension, 
the um, it's still constrained in place. It's it's you know you, you know even though the temporary dimension's gone, um, you know it's still not going to move. So I can hit OK for that. So since they're just temporary dimensions, they're not my final dimensions. Um, they're just there to help you get your correct uh, measurements for your um, your pieces to stay in place. When I want to go back and actually annotate stuff and put my proper dimensions on when everything's finished, then I'm going to go back up to my annotate tab and I'm going to use my align tool. We haven't gotten to that yet. And that's going to give me an actual proper dimension. Notice that they're a little bit different. They're a little bit more refined. Uh, it gives you a better, you know, the temporary dimensions that are there just to kind of help you get your drawing set up and then we go from there. So but that's what the difference is. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, don't worry about doing any regular dimensions now. We'll go into that later. Um, that's one of the last things that we do when we start putting things on sheets. I know there's a, the first half of the semester always goes really fast and uh, we do have a lot of stuff to still cover, but we do have every, plenty of time to do that. Uh, just the main thing I want you to do is just kind of focus on the stuff that we've done already in class and that, that'll help you, um, you know, just keep up with that. Uh, any other questions, y'all, about anything? Is there a way to rename a file? From within the program, like the model you're working on? Yeah, you can just save it as another name, just file, save as project, and then a new name. And then just delete the old one, I guess. You can just delete the old one, yeah. Yeah, you can just, or you can just rename the file, you know, as a typical file, just go into the file where it's saved and right click and hit rename. You can rename it like that too. Okay, thank you. But this is probably the easiest way to do it. I like to do it this way, that way, because uh, I like to keep my progress on my drawing. Say, like, if at this point uh, in my drawing, I want to make another change to it, um, like I want to give the client an option between a gable roof and a hip roof, I may say, you know, keep this one saved as, you know, um, project one hip roof, and then I'll do save as and then change it to a gable roof. And that way I still have both active. I, I still have um, both options to go back to and just work on. I don't have to start either one over. <clears throat> Any other questions, y'all? Um, Ms. Martin, from last uh, class on Monday, mm -hmm. you told me mm -hmm. to remind you today on how to import from AutoCAD to Revit. Oh, yes. Um, let me see if I've got, <clears throat> let me see if I've got a CAD file on my computer. There's so much stuff on here, I can never remember where anything is. All right, we, um, we're not going to be going over that too much in this class. Uh, I don't think I have any CAD files on this computer. I can still show you how to do it. Um, say, for instance, you have a floor plan uh, that's in CAD. You're at work and your boss asks you to take this CAD floor plan and convert it to a Revit file. Uh, well, it's the, obviously the CAD floor plan is going to be in a two-dimensional format. So in order to actually import that, let's do um, file, new, project, architectural template. So this is a new file, level one. You're gonna go to insert. There's two different ways you can insert a, Rev a CAD file. There's CAD link. And there's import CAD. The difference being um, the two. This is actually importing the CAD drawing itself. Sometimes, depending on the CAD drawing, it can be really huge and it will uh, bog down your your model as it gets bigger. Or you can do link CAD. Uh, I tend to do link CAD, and when I do um, when I used to teach importing CAD, I would always do link CAD. Now we try to tend to focus uh, strictly on Revit. But if you do a link CAD file, you can just go there, 
find your CAD file. I don't think I have a CAD file. And then just open that CAD file. It's going to open on here as well. And uh, Rosalind, was that you asking that? Yes. Okay. Um, offline from a different class, we'll kind of go into that a little bit more if, if you need it and if other people do, but that's basically how you do it. You can just go to uh, link uh, insert and then CAD link. Try that a couple of times if you have a, a CAD file. I'll see if I can find a CAD file to show you a little bit better next class, but uh, real quickly, okay. I don't have one on, on this computer. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's just as simple as link CAD and then it'll come in here, it'll be imported. There's a little bit more to it than that, but it's, it's pretty easy after that. And then the nice part about it, once you link that CAD file, you can just draw on top of that CAD file. But I'd like to show you some other stuff if you actually need to do how to uh, know how to use that. <clears throat> but that's okay. a simple explanation right there. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, any other questions? I had a couple of questions that sure. came up when I was working on my model. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of issues with my floors. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just wondering, is there a way to just select the floors like all together? Because I kept trying to like click on them and it seemed like it wouldn't select them because I just sometimes I just want to like delete it and start again. And I kind of had to go like a long way around to do that. So sometimes, sometimes selecting stuff in Revit can be really annoying, <laughs> if, especially if you're dealing with like uh, certain elements and floors is one of them. So let me just throw okay. in this real quick. Um, one thing that may help if you come down to this little tool right here, it's called select element by face. Uh, and if you change that, to turn that on, that may help. So let's try and do a couple of examples of that. I'm just going to throw a floor in here real quickly. It's just a slab. So here I can just click on it like this. Probably what happened is this is turned off on your computer. So now you can't get it. And now you've got to go to 3D. And you're like, now you got to get it from this angle. Um, So yeah, I can't select it by face here, but if this element is turned on, you should be able to select it by face. And a lot of times if you've got something on the same level, uh, like if we had two floors going on at the same time and it gives you that weird uh, view, let's do that again. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a matter of getting it to the right angle where you can select what you want it to. And yeah, that does get frustrating sometimes, uh, but it's, just unfortunately one of the things that we have to play with on here. Uh, once we get to a little bit more advanced stuff like how um, how we do curtain walls, there's another way that we can kind of go through a select type. But I think just for the issue that you're having now, I'll just be go ahead and see it probably yeah. select because I kept clicking phase. and I was like I can't get it, so I have to like back out of everything I just did because one thing was wrong. Yeah, like, no. so <laughs> that ridiculous. was probably yeah that was probably turned off. So try that, turn that okay. back on and um, see so if So if I helped. had a situation where, if I had like two floors applied on the same surface, would exactly. I be able to just click one and delete and it'll go away? Yes, yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. That's this great. is probably what happened. And it's pre if you turn that tool on, that's probably gonna fix that. So let me jump back to 3D here, turn these colors on. So it's like that when it kind of gets all mushed up together, you've got your two floors on the same level and I need to turn, I need to raise one just that little bit. So if you go to 3D and just kind of get it to a point where you can select the one you want, if you have this on, that'll help. That way this one is now active and I can change the height of that offset as well. So try that. I think that's gonna fix that for you. Okay, awesome. Thank yep. you. Yeah. I had another question too with drawing interior walls. Okay. How do you say like you want to draw like an adjacent wall that's like 12 feet away from a certain point? Is there a way that you can like ha like specifically call out that distance away from another wall that you want to start drawing or do you have to like draw and then like move it into place? Well actually if you, let's go ahead and try that now. So if I want to draw a wall from from here to here and it's 12 foot. Notice I have my temporary dimensions that are popping up here. So I can get it to 12 feet as close as possible. But if I just do it at like right here, 
Can I bring this down? Let's connect that there. So it says it's 12 feet right here, but notice it's coming from the center line to the center line. Here's where I have to mm -hmm. change that temporary dimension marker. It's set to 12 foot now, but I want to change this to 12 foot. And that one moved. And now my correct measurement is 12 foot where I wanted it to be. Now the way the you, when you if you draw the wall and then you go back and do it, you have to remember that the wall you select is the wall that's going to move. If I selected this wall and did the same thing and changed that to like 15 feet, that's the wall that's going to move. But if I want this wall to be 15 feet, I know my external dimensions are correct, and I want this one to be 15 feet. I set my temporary dimension nodes to where the measurement is comes from, and then I can change temporary dimension to 15 feet, and that wall is the one that's going to move. That makes sense. Yeah. Is there a way? So, like with the inferencing, if you're using that to try to do it a certain distance away, I noticed like sometimes if like the measurement I had written down and measuring was like a further distance away, and like I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain it, like it would start inferencing from the opposite end of the room if I would get too far away from a point. Oh yeah. Like if I'm trying to be like 12 feet away, but then it would ends up being closer to like the far wall of the room, it starts being like, oh, well, you're two feet away from this one. And I'm like, well, no, that's not the measurement that's relevant to like what yeah. I took. So it, it gets totally frustrating. Um, so like this wall, if I want to move this wall, but my measurements from this wall to this wall, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I don't have, it won't let me, it's measuring from this and you're like, no, I don't want it measured from there. Right, like, I'm like, I don't care about that number, this is not. I want it cool. measured from this one. So I click on that node, and I can move where I want this to measure from. So now click on that, stretch that down here, and now I can measure from that wall now. Wait, I, like I was looking to do for that. Thing and then you drag it over. Yes, let's do that again. I'm gonna throw another wall in there. Let's turn this off. No, actually, I don't think that's gonna. No, I'd need to throw more in there. Anyway, let's go back to this one. See, the more I, more walls I add, the more weird dimensions I get in here. So yeah, um, yeah, it's just a matter of making sure that you get them to the the right location for where you want that to measure from. So here's here's this other one. Uh, same thing. If I want it measured from this wall and not this one, I just click on that node. Remember, we can just click on it and it'll cycle through. But if I want it to measure from this wall, I'm going to click on it, hold it, drag it to this wall, and then it'll measure from this wall now. Set the nodes to the correct point, interior wall to interior wall. So yeah, a lot of times it's just once you get uh, a lot of walls going on or a lot of other things going on, you need to be able to drag that temporary dimension to where you want it to measure from. Okay. And like, as far as the distance of the dimension lines or like the actual dimensions, like, can you move that and adjust where they are? The dimension line? Mine kept like stacking up on top of each other and I was like, I can't even read oh, yeah. anymore, but I was, I yeah, was that's trying good. to fiddle with it and I couldn't figure out how to move it. So. Once you get a lot of these temporary dimensions in place and they are set to where you want them to be, just delete them. But I still not wanted them because I was trying to set it, but they were uh, on top of each other, so I couldn't even read them. Yeah, if you um, if you've got a bunch going on, let me just go ahead and lock this one, like this, and lock it into place. And then I'm gonna put another one over here, and it's just gonna get busy. Um, I can click on this, and I can temporarily hide it. So I still have access to it, but it's not going to be in my way while I'm trying to draw other ones. So until you get comfortable with uh, actually getting things in place how you want them to, and you want to still have access to it, but it's getting busy, then you can just kind of hide mm -hmm. them like that. You can use temporary hide isolate. If things are too big, um, and we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but that's okay. Uh, notice that this is the scale of the drawing here. You can also change the scale 
and it'll make them smaller, but we haven't yeah. see that way it makes it a little, it's not as muddy. But that's the way that you can do it. Oh, well. yeah, what I'd, do is I'd, I'd recommend uh, just kind of temporarily hiding it. Um, okay. But play with it and see which works, which works best for you. Okay, another question I had was um, when you, like how the dimension markers are set to center line. So should we leave it set to that or would it be okay if we set it to how we actually want to dimension it so you don't have to constantly adjust it every time you draw a wall or is there like a reason be, why that you, 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 it, you but, can do that. Sorry, I'm cutting you off. Uh, you can do that. But for this class, we're going to just move the dimensions. We can go over that a little bit more okay. in the second half of the class, but it has to do with how you start, start your walls at the very beginning of the, of the project. And uh, just to make it easier, I think it's easier to have things yeah. at the center line to when we're starting out. But we'll talk about that a little bit more in the second half of the class. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Any other questions, y'all? Ms. Martin, is there a book that you would recommend that we can reference to whenever we're stuck somewhere? Yes, it's in the syllabus. I forget the name of it, but it's listed in the syllabus. Okay, I didn't yeah. see it. I'll look for it again. Uh, I'll look it up and um, once we finish the recording, I'll resend it to you. Um, but yeah, I recommend that book. Uh, and I, like I said, I do teach it, you know, like this, um, but I do recommend people getting that textbook to reference it, reference back to it. Um, you know, if you don't want to keep watching the videos and stuff like that. So uh, I'll, I'll re email it to everybody. Anything else, y'all? Okay, if there's no other questions, just a quick review from class today. We went over roof types. And then uh, what I would suggest doing um, moving forward. Uh, you know, you have until the 19th to get, you know, some work done and kind of practice this stuff and kind of play with it a little bit. Um, when I get your, when I get a chance to review your work that you've already turned in, please refer back to those uh, notes and make any corrections from there. Um, but what I suggest is um, trying to get your roof knocked out um, with the, a similar overhang to what it looks like on your house, um, similar slope on your house. And just play with these other things that we learned how to do today. So the, the new addition to your house is obviously just going to be a roof, but we did learn how to play with some other stuff that's going to make things easier for you as we move forward. So um, yeah, that's it for today. Unless there's any other questions, if anything comes up, you know, over the break or anything and you need help with anything, send me a text. And if I can get to you right away, I will, or I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and then we'll just go from there. So besides that, um, that's it for today. Uh, have a safe and happy version of Mardi Gras <laughs> this year. Uh, be socially responsible and, um, and, and stay safe, but try and have fun. So uh, I will see y'all in, um, in the two, in a week and a half. Take care, y'all. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.